My name is Elisa Summer O'Hara, and I'm excited to welcome you to the GSV Cup Demo Day. We've got a great day of demos ahead of us. The GSV Cup, presented by Google Cloud and GSV Ventures and supported by Holland IQ, announces the 50 most innovative digital learning and workforce skills startups that are poised to revolutionize pre-K to gray learning. At Google, we're inspired by how ed tech startups continue to solve challenges with agility, innovative technology, and determination. We're proud to partner with EdTechs in many ways, whether it's integrating with us at Google for Education on Chromebooks and Google Classroom, building with us on Google Cloud, or working with us across YouTube or Grow with Google or many other areas. If you'd like to learn more about partnering with Google, we'll have a session in Balboa at 1 p.m. with Anthony Hernandez on my team. The GSV Cup culminates here today at the ASU GSV Summit, where the GSV Cup 50 will showcase their innovations in front of an audience of leaders across K-12, higher ed, and workforce learning. So thank you for being here today. Let's give a round of applause to our GSV Cup 50. Bring it on. That's right. All right, well, we're very excited. I'm going to pass it off to Alex, and you'll hear more about this year's amazing group of startups. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, so I'm Alex. I'm a VP with GSV Ventures um, and help run the GSV Cup with Michael and Fran, wherever he is somewhere. Um, and again, a huge thank you to Google Cloud for being amazing sponsors. Really would not be possible without them. Um, so just quickly, for those of you who aren't aware of the GSV Cup, we really put this together a few years ago to um, showcase really the best pre-seed and seed stage startups in ed tech across the pre-K to gray spectrum. Um, we actually switched it up a bit this year. Normally, it's kind of a, a very cumbersome application process where the startups have to apply. This year, since we wanted to make sure we included every single startup globally and make it as low friction as possible to nominate a startup or for a startup to be considered in the pool, we opened up nominations to everyone. Um, and so this year, over 1,000 companies were nominated. And so the 50 companies you're about to see demo were selected from over 1,000 companies um, globally. So really, really impressive group. Um, we're really excited to honor them. This group of 50 this year, really diverse group from across 15 different countries. 31% um, are domiciled outside the US. Um, you know, we have 66% either have a female founder or a founder of color. Um, and unsurprisingly, 75% of this year's um, are AI companies. So um, we're really excited to hear from this group. The way it's gonna work is they're sectioned based on where they fall in the pre-K to gray spectrum. So up first, we're gonna hear from the innovative upskilling uh, tech startups that are in the workforce space and in, in the adult learning space. Um, each company will demo for five minutes and then I'll come back on and, and introduce the next one. So thank you all for, for coming. and. Round of applause for our very first company, TAP, uh, which will be presented by Jason Spires. So they always say that you say the best for last. So when she said that I was first, I, I kind of took that to mean something. So <laughs> my name is Jason Spires. I'm the CEO and co-founder of TAP, which stands for Training All People. That's an interesting title for me because when I was 17, I was a welfare kid trying to figure out how I was going to get my first meal. Like every teenager, I made stupid mistakes, probably bigger than some of you when you were 17. I decided to sell pot. I don't recommend it. You'll find out why in a minute. At the age of 19, I got arrested for selling pot and was given a 30-year sentence for my nonviolent cannabis offenses, where I was spent 15 years in prison for it. To get even worse than that, when I got there, Due to a weird loophole in Illinois law, I was deemed legally unrehabilitatable and unable to learn and exempted from the very programs that incentivize recidivism. We can set aside whether someone's actually unable to learn or actually legally unrehabilitatable no matter what crime they did. You don't benefit society by telling them that if it doesn't serve a useful purpose. So training all people is my way of saying they were wrong when they said that I was legally unrehabilitatable, and there's plenty others like me. 
When I got out of prison, I was washing dishes for $8.25 an hour. A year later, I was admitted as the first incarcerated student in the Phi Theta Kappa. A year after that, I transferred to Stanford, where I studied artificial intelligence. After I got out of that, I worked in big tech. Today, I'm the CEO and co-founder of Training All People. So what is Training All People? We create virtual hands-on training curriculum and assessments for people to learn tactile skills. Think of the Khan Academy that comes through the glass. We solve the issues of how do you actually learn how to turn the wrench when you don't have access to the $10 million tool to do it inside of a factory. So, but does it work? It all sounds great, right? Well, with our partners like Northrop Grumman, Honeywell, and other people, we were able to show a 50% decreased time to contribution. We get trainees dollar ready. You don't just know stuff, you're ready to go make your first dollar. In over one session, with one of the big five defense contractors, we could show a 45% skill improvement. Our manufacturing partners asked us to start working with their colleges for a pipeline of talent. What I often say is, what do you not see in this photo? I'm in a room full of high school kids. What do you not see? Not a single one is texting on their phone. Colleges found that this helped get program engagement and get people to enroll in their programs when they use our training. So this is our team. A bunch of boring people, especially the CEO guy. He's, he's not interesting at all. So if you want to learn more, you can look at tap3d.com. But seeing is believing. So with that, here's our learning track. I can get more into that later. We've been focusing in the semiconductor space. But we're going to go into a wider industrial maintenance market and then be an end-to-end -end workforce development platform. But since seeing is believing, let's show you a little bit of the video. Show you the tech. 10,000 clean room. That means there are less than 10,000 particles in a cubic so foot of air. So we do not build VR Particles include for VR tiny sake. things like dust, pollen. I had them cut the audio. I can talk to it. We do not build VR because we could build VR. That right there, we just took a wall off of a tool that cost about $10 million. Even if you were in the fab getting actual training, standing next to the equipment, they're not going to let you take a $10 million tool apart to see how the inside of it works. Everyone hears about the semiconductor industry. Has everyone been inside one? Been inside clean rooms? A lot of people talk about them. Not many people know about them. We solve the identification problem of what this job is actually about, what the wider industrial marketplace is actually about when you're an industrial technician. Because when you're dealing with people, if they don't understand the opportunity of what you're presenting them, they're unable to identify to it and apply their energy and resources to becoming it. Training all people opens people's aperture to what is possible so that they don't grow up thinking selling pots is the only thing that they can do, or being in a gang is the only thing they can do, or working a jack-in-a-box is the only thing they can do. So I got 40 seconds left. What you're seeing right now in this video is I'm literally going through and doing an assessment where I grabbed a hose to a leak checker, I hooked it up to a PVD-101 tool, and I'm getting ready to go through a leak checking assessment where I have a guided instruction screen actually grading me on how I'm doing and telling me when I'm making critical mistakes. This is something that used to require getting into a secure clean room and entrusting them to work on tools that make semiconductor chips that a single hair falling off your head was like driving a Ferrari off a cliff. We solve equipment shortages, we solve talent identification to the opportunity problems, and we solve instructor shortages. So with that, that's my presentation. We are TAP, let's tap into the next generation of workers. Hello everyone, it's fantastic to be here. So my company is called Josh Talks. Josh in Hindi means vigor. The goal of my company is to unlock human potential. We serve an audience that is living in the villages of India, aged 16 to 30. So over our 10 year history, almost 10 year history, we built two products. The first, is where we give rural youth access to role models. You know, I think role models are one of the most underappreciated function of doing well in life. Had it not been for the role models I got, I might have been living in a small village in the Himalayas. And I wouldn't be here. So we do this through TED-like talks. Here is a short video. 
We are building a spacecraft which will land on the moon by the end of next year. My name is Ankit Kavatra and I will be ending hunger. Do not do what everybody else does. Do it differently. Why am I criminal? I challenge the patriarchal made society norms. What I'm really having fun is about hosting the event. I'm getting to interact with the audience, play a lot of games, hear amazing stories, and I can't wait for the next one. हिमालय में नए ग्लेशियर्स बनने लगेंगे जो कि पिछले आइस एज 10,000 साल पहले के बाद से कभी नहीं हुई हैं। So what does the future of hacking look like? At 35, I did not have 35 memories. From 35 to 38, I have millions. The difference was I stopped existing, I started living. Nobody owes it to you. Not one person owes it to you. You want to make a film? It's your dream. You have to pursue it. I just can't be more amazed at something like Josh Talks because there are people with amazing stories coming and talking to normal people who haven't been doing what they need to do. And these people and these stories inspire such people. YouTube alone, over 50 million people watch a Josh Talks every single month. Across the internet, about 150 million people watch Josh Talks every month. The second product we built is an English learning app. You know, although India is a, a country where it's predominantly Hindi speaking, but still if you want to do well in your life, you want to get a $1,000 a month job, you cannot do it unless you know how to speak fluently in English. And it was surprising to me that nobody had solved this problem because when I shifted from that village to a city, for six months I couldn't go and play with the kids there because they were playing cricket in English. And I used to play cricket in Hindi. So this was very personal to me, so we built out a very innovative solution of solving English in under $7 uh, uh, course price. Hi everyone, so here is how the Josh Skills app works. You open the app, and it opens into an inbox screen something like like this something like whatsapp where you click on the course and you go into a chat interface where on a daily basis i get lessons from my teacher now this is a 90 day course so every day i get one lesson so so let's say this is uh, lesson 48 uh, on pronunciation now what happens is that I go to start this lesson and every lesson has four parts grammar, speaking, vocabulary and reading. And I have to complete all of these four sections to complete my lesson for today. Now if I go to the speaking section which is the most interesting part of the app, here I get to call a practice partner and, and practice English with a partner. As you can see I have to practice for at least 15 minutes today. So I am going to make the call. Hello, hi Prakash. Yes, hi bro, how are you? I am very good, how are you? I am just doing well bro. And where are you from? Mm, Bihar, Bihari boy, and you? I am from Himachal, Himachal Pradesh. Uh, okay, that's just so, how say, what are you doing currently? I am a uh, working professional data analyst in IT company. What about you? Yeah, I am a teacher bro, I teach in private school. I, oh, you're a teacher in private school. Very nice. Very nice. And how many uh, days old are you in this course? Yeah, six months. Ago. Six months? Yeah. Oh, very nice. Your English is also very fluent. And you? Uh, I am one month old. Okay, so... People on an average spend over an hour every day practicing English. And as you can see, over uh, 9 million people have used the app and about 500,000 are actually paid users who've learned English on the app. Thank you. Thanks, Shobit. Um, next, we will have Sparkwise, which will be presented by Vince Jung. We can't escape it. AI is disrupting everything, including the workplace. Um, we have almost 50% of the jobs that's going to get reshaped. And some of the most vulnerable jobs have been replaced. Uh, the stakes on workforce development are higher than ever, 
we have to elevate human capabilities so that we can actually harness the power of AI. For example, human workers need to excel at reaching unique insights that AI can't get to on its own, and influencing through human relationships that AI can't forge. But here's the problem. The skills we need to succeed are higher order capabilities that are very hard to teach at scale because of the impact scale dilemma of learning. You solve for scale and you get solo e-learning videos and modules and we all know how we love power clicking through those. You solve for impact and you get live interactive learning um, with you know, expert workshops or coaching that can be great, but they don't scale because experts are expensive. At SparkWise, we're tackling this impact scale dilemma with a platform that radically scales engaging live group learning. I'm Vince. I've led McKinsey's capability building programs at Fortune 500 companies and saw this trade-off and dilemma myself. My co-founder, Roman, was a former colleague also at McKinsey who was in their talent development function. And my co-founder, Ari, was at Minerva, employee number one, building their active learning technologies. Three pillars of the SparkWise platform. First, we power engaging live group learning. Research shows that adults learn best when they solve problems, they discuss, they practice actively with each other, and our platform is grounded in those active learning principles. Second, we power content from top experts. We partner with world-class uh, capability building experts and institutions. For example, we're working with Harvard Business Publishing to take their uh, strategic leadership content and power it on our platform. We're partnering with top consulting firms to power their client capability, build cap capability building programs like Gen AI Academies or change management programs. And we're working with book authors to take their static content into interactive group experiences. Number three, we unlock limitless scale. The reason why live learning doesn't scale is that you need expert facilitation. We remove this constraint by making groups facilitate themselves, thereby making live learning accessible anytime for any group size. So let me show you a little bit how it works. What you're seeing on the screen is a group that's been matched together to uh, practice a skill for an hour. Uh, the platform is guiding them through a very structured set of activities that range from um, analyzing problems, uh, coming up with solutions, giving each other feedback, uh, like making the learning applicable to their own lives and more. So the instructions and the timer on the top left are making it very clear what the group has to do. The progress bar you see at the bottom are um, allowing people to stay coordinated as they move together. And in the center is the active learning workspace where we bring the science of learning to life. We have 30 different activity types. So for example, there are these you know, group debates where you drag dots and discuss. There are drag and drop activities. Um, there are activities where you work on your own first and then you actually compare your answers with each other and give each other feedback. Um, uh, where you see expert perspectives on the things that you worked on, uh, solo reflections, and, and many more types of set types. Um, what you're going to see at the bottom, there's a purple box there. It's one of the intelligent prompts that our system provides so that the group can really engage in an interactive way together. And we're adding more AI power features like that to uh, really uh, enrich the group learning experience on their own. We have over 90% satisfaction from over 100 organizations that use us. Uh, what learners love about us is that it's very collaborative and fun and easy to use. And leaders love that we help them scale live learning in a way they could not before, and that it allows their teams to stay sharp, adaptive, and, and uh, competitive. We all know technologies like AI um, are a double-edged sword. They can enhance us. They can also make us complacent. We're working on elevating human capabilities so that we can really harness and drive the impact of AI, not the other way around. Thank you. Thanks, Vince. Uh, next, we will have Up Limit, which will be presented by Julia Stieglitz. Okay. 
Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Julia Stiglitz, and I am the CEO and co-founder of Uplimit. Uh, so my background is I began my career as a Teach for America teacher in East San Jose. I taught fourth grade. Um, and then I went on to become one of the first employees at Coursera. I joined the, the month the company launched when there was 10 people. Um, my last tour of duty was starting and then scaling the enterprise business. So from pitching the idea to the CEO that we should have an enterprise business to when I left, we had about 1,300 customers. And it went on to become the first line in the company's S1 when it went public. But there was always a disconnect for me between what I felt as a teacher, where learning was engaging and inspiring and differentiated, and people completed the classes, and sort of what I saw with the first wave of online learning, which was absolutely amazing at opening up access to this sort of rarefied content, but really lacked a lot of those other qualities that I knew to be so important to actually drive engagement and actually drive outcomes with learners. And so at the time, I thought that's the trade-off. Like, either you choose engagement or you choose scale, but you can't get both. And then it was during the pandemic when I started to think, well, maybe there's a way that you can. Um, and the two big things that were really clear that were changing were, one, how we engaged online socially, because it had to with the pandemic. And then, two, what has turned out to be an even bigger thing was the role that AI could play in creating new types of interactivity at scale. And so I reached out to my co-founder, Saurabh, who's in the room in the Up Limit sweatshirt. <laughs> and um, he was an early engineer at Coursera and then had gone on to Google Brain. And, um, and we recruited our third co-founder, Jake Samuelson, who was an early product manager at Coursera. And we started building on this idea of what is this next generation of online learning. We recruited a, a lot of people. Not everyone came from Coursera, <laughs> um, but um, a lot of really terrific people. Um, you know, in many ways, the disconnect that I felt between what I saw as a teacher and what I felt um, with the first wave of online learning, I think, has been one of the limiting factors in ed tech. Like, it's a services business, and so many of those services are what make a difference to learners. The difference between completion and not completion, the difference between engagement and lack of engagement. But technology hasn't really been able to touch those services until the last year or two with generative AI. And that's really where we've been focused. And so we're building an end-to-end -end learning, AI learning platform that delivers high-touch, personalized learning experiences at scale. And our mission is to unlimit the world's learning potential. So there's three elements to our platform. The first is around uh, using AI to accelerate the production of content. The second piece is using it to drive personalization and learner support. And then the third element is so much data is collected in these classes, and we think of the classes as living, breathing things. How can you use that data to flow back into the system to improve the courses going forward? And so I'm going to start flying through this because I have very little time. But uh, here you see an example of our AI content generation where you can upload videos or docs or PDFs. And it takes, learner, or takes instructors through a workflow, thinking about where the human should be and where it should be AI and um, to ultimately create what we think of as a really good V1 of a, of a course. Um, we have lots of tools around scaling learner support, like an AI TA. And a lot of what we've observed here is that um, if you just have a chatbot, you're still only going to reach really the like, top 10% of the class. It's still the students in the front row that are raising their hand, asking the questions. And the students you really want to reach are the ones that are struggling formulating those questions. And so we've worked to make the AI a lot more proactive, identifying when students need help, when they need a hint, and then proactively leading them to the right answer without giving it to them. Um, we've also you know, thought, you know, where what, what needs to stay human. Like there are certain elements that are just very motivating by having a human involved, but that can really be scaled up. And so we have a student CRM that program managers and instructors can use to drive personalized support through our workflows. Um, we also have a really great marketplace of courses focused on AI um, that companies can leverage. Um, with people like Grant Ingersoll, who's a former CTO of Wikipedia, he teaches a search with machine learning course. Um, and it's working. So our completion rates, we have 75% completion rate, which compares to about 3 to 6% what you see in MOOCs, 65 NPS, 95% of learners say that they're going to apply the skills back to their job. Um, the largest cohort that we've run was in partnership with OpenAI, and we had 6,500 people in it. There was one program manager that was managing that course in addition to a bunch of other courses. Um, and so there, there really is the potential to you know, scale this and deliver great quality. Um, we're working with some amazing companies. Um, uh, Databricks is one of the companies we're working with to scale their customer education program. But we're also working with companies like Kraft Heinz and GE Health who have rolled out AI accelerators with us. 
Um, so finally, I want to leave uh, with a, a student story. This is one of our early students, um, Emily. Um, she was enrolled, co-enrolled in a master's in machine learning from Northwestern, which is a $90,000 degree. And then she was enrolled in our $400 applied machine learning course. And she paused her $90,000 degree to focus on our $400 machine learning course because she felt like it did more to move the needle in her career. And I think there's so much potential to just sort of break the paradigm of cost and quality in education. And I think this is the moment to do it. Thank you. All right. Uh, thank you so much, Julia. Last but not least, in this section, uh, we will have Up Smith, which will be presented by Wyatt Smith. Thank you very much. Hey everybody, I'm Wyatt. I'm the CEO at Upsmith, where we're building software to combat America's skilled worker shortage. So across our country right now, there are over one million openings in US manufacturing and construction. These are builder jobs that really are the backbone of our economy. And right now, there are three people that leave the industry in skilled trades for every one who joins. At the same time, there's this really big growth in demand as we're reshoring and looking for ways to build US competitiveness on core builder jobs. Our company exists to help to expand workforce productivity for the employers we serve and create really meaningful opportunities for people in their careers at the same time. For many years, companies thought about their employees as people to deploy for services. But increasingly, given these workforce shortages, it becomes more and more important to think about them as people to drive profitability, to get more revenue, to lower costs, and ultimately create better outcomes for your firm. We believe at Upsmith that there's an opportunity for all technicians to become profit-driving forces inside the companies they serve. And our belief is grounded in gamification software that's about making someone's experience meaningfully better using recognition and the power of affirmation to drive better outcomes, a better business case. So our core insight is around motivation. People are motivated by the opportunity to thrive, to show mastery and autonomy in their work. And so we think about ways to hook into the systems of record companies use to recognize people when they behave in ways that their employers want to see. Because recognition is such a powerful way of incentivizing behavior, we then see big changes in the rate at which people show best practices. As that happens, we fuel contests between different teams and then use the power of technology to unlock the connection with financial outcomes. And in doing so, create tools for companies, for employers, for managers to be more effective at driving business outcomes. So our goal is to be able to create this seamlessly in the background. There are no apps that you download. There are new work, no new workflows that you sign up for. We're able to do this in a way that ultimately creates a magical experience for the employers and the people that use the product. So how does that work? Well, first, it's about using magic links to drop in someone's pocket congratulatory texts whenever they perform in ways that we know move the needle. It's about using opportunities for the individuals to then see the things that they've done, to see immediate acknowledgement of those outcomes and the links to then how those data inform financial outcomes for their employer. We're ultimately wanting to then create opportunities for people to redeem those points that they earn for things that they find super motivating. And in many cases, this isn't about stuff, it's about time. Extra days of PTO, chances for flexible schedules, things that lots of folks who are hourly workers don't have access to. What is fun is that it drives lots of behavior change. So this is a screenshot from an internal text thread at one of our partners, and you can see that people were pretty fired up for the chance to ultimately move up these leaderboards and coming in on their days off as a chance of even driving better outcomes. Our goal is to show ways for home service companies, our core customers, to grow their businesses and to do it in ways that create meaningfully more enriched experiences for the technicians that they employ so that ultimately we can overcome this big challenge our country faces on the skilled worker shortage. We're really excited today to be revealing data for the first time on a case study with one of our core partners. We're joined by the CEO of Rotoco, uh, Brian McCann. They're the largest roll-up of Roto-Rooter franchises in California, and their team is awesome. They have really, really impressive outcomes as it relates to moving the needle on productivity. This is Josh. Josh has been in the industry for some time. Uh, in fact, the, the head of operations at the company said, you know, I don't know if I've ever seen Josh smile. But Josh, when connected with ways to recognize his behavior and the massive change that he is demonstrating in the way in which he goes about his job, 
is really impressive. It's translating to $6,000 more per month in commissions that he's earning as he goes and serves people better. There's a chance at the branch level to use the intervention to fundamentally change the rate at which this core behavior that Brian and his team want to promote is happening. So you see the black line, which is the moment of intervention, and the hockey stick on the behavior that they know creates a better outcome for their customer. That translates ultimately into bottom line performance. And at a time where it's becoming harder than ever due to competitive forces in their industry, over $100 of incremental revenue per assigned call is leading to great outcomes for our employer and people like Josh who work on their team. So I'm really excited to share a testimonial video and uh, overview how that product works and excited for what's still ahead on this journey. If you're an employer in the skilled trades right now, you face challenges all over the place. It's challenging to have that customer does it go really well and follow the best practices for how they engage and build trust and ultimately deliver a really high quality service experience. I think the biggest challenge for any plumbing group is communication. With Boost, it just gives you a chance to get rewarded for doing your job. You know, helps you, helps the customer, helps the company, helps everybody. We would basically choose behavior that we want to see followed. That's inside service Titan and it sees the behavior and automatically senses it, sends a, a message to a technician when the behavior's been achieved and they receive points. They have an app on their phone where they can look at their points and when they decide they want to cash in their points for a prize. It's just the understanding of things and, and making sure that we're standardized for everything, but sometimes hard to monitor it. So there is a lot of trust and faith in the communication that we have with our plumbers and our support techs. One of the biggest things that I've found with Upsmith versus any other team that we've ever worked with is the actual motivation for things. You guys are so invested in making this work that it's uh, infectious and makes everybody want to you know, support you as you support us and, and make sure this thing works. Anytime that we see Boost coming into our office and getting recognized, rewarded, it's, it's, it's a blessing. It's a blessing. Thanks to the GSP team for creating the opportunity to share more about our vision for boosting productivity one technician at a time. Thank you. All right. Uh, thanks, Wyatt. And can I get one more round of applause for those amazing upskilling tech companies?